This lecture is part of an online course of multivariable calculus and we are going to talk about vector fields. So what are they? A vector field is basically gives you at every point in a space or in the plane a vector. So I can say at each point in the space or in the plane we have a vector a vector that's called it's a vector field so basically by the formal definition I can say that a vector field a vector field is basically a function is a function f that assigns signs to each point to each point in its domain a vector f of x and y okay so Let's see what we have in the plane. So in the plane, a vector field is something like that. F is a function of x and y times i plus q, which is a function of x and y times j. So where p and q are functions of x and y. So by a vector field in R2 we have at each point, at each point, right? x and y, we have a vector, we have a vector f that is p of x and y and q of x and y. Okay, let's look at some examples. Example one, just look at the velocity field. Well, on the velocity field, we have v of x and y. It's like the wind velocity. that gives you a vector that gives a vector that it has a length and a direction. That's why it's important, the direction and the length. Vector at the point, at every point. It's better to say at every point x and y. Okay, so another example. I'm going to graph this one. The constant vector field is 2i plus 1j. So it's a vector field 2 and 1. And let me have my plane x axis, y axis at every point. For example, if this is 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. Okay, for example, at the point 0, 0, I have the vector 2 and 1. For example, at the point 1, 0, I have the vector 2 units to the right, 1 unit up. At this vector, as, at this point, I have the same vector at every point, every point, okay? You see, at every point in the, in the space, in the plane, I have the vector 2 and 1. That's why it's called the constant vector field. Another example, let's say f is xi plus yj, okay, so the vector field is x and y, okay, what is that? Let me graph this vector field, x axis, y axis, at every point, I'm going to plug in the coordinates of the point, and then I'm going to have the graph. For example, at the origin, 
I, I'm gonna plug in zero zero I have this zero vector at for example the point one and zero I'm gonna plug in one and zero so I have this vector one and then zero like this for example at the point one one the vector would be one one and so one unit to the right one unit up it would be like that for example at the point zero and one it would be the vector zero and one it's like this at for example negative one and zero it would be negative one and zero let's go a little further for example at the point two two at this point I have the vector 2, 2. So 2 units to the right, 2 units up. It would be 2 units up, actually. So it is something like this. Okay? And another point is like that. So you see, it's going to change according to the place of the of the vector it's getting actually bigger and bigger it's just because we are moving further from the origin okay let's look at another example example four assume that we are taking negative y i plus x j so the vector field would be negative y and x so let's see what this vector field is oops Let me graph x-axis and y-axis. At 0, 0, we have the 0 vector. For example, at the point 1 and 0, then the vector would be 0 and 1, right? So 0, 1 unit up. It's like that, okay? For example, at the point 0, 1, y coordinate is 1 that's why i get a negative 1 and 0 so it would be negative 1 to your left and 0 up okay at this point would be like that at this point would be like this let let's go a little further for example 2 2 2 2 is right there it would be negative 2 to your right and then 2 up it would be like this so let's look at, for example, the point negative 2 and 0. Then the vector would be 0 and negative 2. So 0, negative 2 down. So do you notice that it's getting bigger and bigger and it's rotate about the origin? That's this vector field. Okay, I have a shape that I would like to show it to you so it's the xy plane and um this is the vector field 2 1 you see at every point every point it has some um random points i have this vector field and if all of them because there are the vectors 2 and 1 the color is the same okay Let's go another one. The vector fields x and y. So for the vector field x and y, you see at every point, have it something like this. As you see, if it moves further from the origin, it's getting larger and larger. And I'm going to use the color so that you see everything with the same color has the same size. For example, the green ones, they have the same size. The yellow ones, they have the same size. And it's proportional. They are not zero, but um, I just wanted to um, you to see the length. That's why they are very small, actually, but they are not zero. You see? We have some vectors in here. They're, they're very small vectors. Okay? But we just wanted to make it proportion. The program makes it like this. Okay, let's go to the other one. The vector field negative y and x, negative y and x is like this. OK, 
rotate for a second. There you go. You see, it rotates um, about the origin, right? And I'm going to use the colors so that everything in the same color has the same shape like this, has the same length. This one is the vector field uh, negative y and x. At every point, um, we have a vector. OK, now let's see what happens if we have vector field in a space. It would be the similar as before, but the function, the vector field function, would be pi plus qj plus rk basically it has three coordinates it's just because it's in a space where p q and r are functions of x y and z as an example look at this vector field 2i plus x, y, j plus 3x squared z, k. So this is our p, this is our q, and this one is r. Okay. So we have a function as for the first coordinate, we have a function for the second coordinate, and then we have a function for third coordinate. So for example, at the point it's really hard to graph, right? But for the point, for example, 1, 2, and then negative 3, then the vector field at 1, 2, and then negative 3 is equal to what? The first coordinate is, is constant, 2. The second coordinate would be x times y, so it would be 2 times 1. This is 2. And then the third coordinate is 3. The first coordinate square so one square and then times negative three so it would be two two and then negative nine okay so as an example i'm going to show it to you this one this is basically you see i have space and at every point i have the vector field two one and one which is basically like this. Okay, let me move it a little bit so that you see. So at every point I have two, one, and one, okay? And um, so if I use, I actually use as colors to show that if the vectors are different in size, it can show it to us, but the vectors are all the same. They are constant vectors, okay? This is the constant vector field. The next example is this one. 2xy and 3x squared z, the one that we just discussed. And then let me just make it proportion. And then, so at every point, okay, I have this vector field. You see, some of them are straight, some of them they go up, some of them down. It's just basically, we're just plugging the coordinates of the point into our vector field, we get a different vector. That's why all of them are kind of like different. You can look at all the differences. And then I'm going to make it proportion so that you see the sizes are all different. And then I'm going to use the colors so that everything with the same size, they have the same colors. So, for example, look at these ones, the green, yellow, and the red ones. See? Yeah, so this is the vector field that we just discussed. If I don't make it proportion, you can see all of the vectors. Okay, very good. So one important example, or basically I can say one important vector field, vector field is the gradient vector field. What is that? 
gradient of a function is actually a vector field a vector field okay because at every point for example if I have a function f of x and y in the plane then the gradient of f is partial derivative with respect to x and partial derivative with respect to y and you see for every point I have a gradient vector so together the gradient vector field in a plane is a vector field in the plane and uh, for a function of three variables x y and z the gradient of the function we defined it like that the partial derivative with respect to y partial derivative with respect to excuse me partial derivative with respect to x partial derivative with respect to y and partial derivative with respect to z it is actually a vector field in a space because at every point if you plug in um, the point x y and z into there because each one of them is a function of x and y and z we get a different vector okay so this is called the gradient vector field and it's very important the question is this can we identify any vector field any vector field as gradient of a function of some function f You can think about this. For example, this vector field that we just discussed, is it a gradient of a function? Is a gradient vector of a function? Okay. The answer for this question is actually no. We cannot do that. If the vector field f is gradient of a function for some function f, Then we say, we say that the vector field F is conservative. Vector field. And the function F is called potential function. Potential function. Of the vector field F. So we're going to talk about conservative vector fields and potential functions later on. But um, not all the vector fields can be identified as a vector gradient vector of a function.